And it begins with the show that they created. Welcome back, Jason and Alexis in the morning, right here on my talk on this Wednesday, March 13th. Uh, we have a, a great story from Marjorie coming up in uh, just a second, but we You've got mail. We are, of course, hearing from you. And I got Marjorie, I wanted to share this email with you. Uh, and then I can't wait to hear uh, the story that you want to share with everyone. Uh, this is from a woman named Beth. And, and Beth has been listening. Well, she listened to you two. Uh, and she's been with Alexis and uh, me since the beginning. And she wrote me on my personal accounts. I, I always listen to her. She's she's a sweetheart. She, the title of the email is uh, Sweet Ian. She was good morning, love. As I tuned in this morning, that opening brought me back to 2005 and my carpool to school. Ian and Marjorie did a bit called Happy Boy. And we would always be in the van when it aired. Jordan uh, would have been in third grade, Jordan, her son. And I learned at the first parent-teacher conference that Jordan uh, would arrive at school, gather anyone who he could gather, and tell them the happy boy story or joke. He felt strongly He felt strongly at age 10 that the day should start with a laugh or something uplifting, and that came from Ian. Uh, he is 27 now and is the absolute life of the party. I don't think all of you at my talk know what the shows bring to us listeners, but this sweet story brings a tear in, uh, to my eye and I needed Marjorie to hear it. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Isn't that great? That's wonderful. I have to say, so um, Ian's funeral was on March 3rd and um, my boys, it was a traditional Episcopal funeral service. So the boys each, the, the rector told me you can have one person before the funeral starts and um, they can speak for five minutes. And uh, I said, how about two at two and a half minutes? And she said, <laughs> look at you producing, <laughs> producing every moment. Oh, I yeah. love it. And uh, she said, fine. And so um, my son Campbell, they both did beautifully. I mean, that's a difficult position to be in. Um, but my, my son Campbell focused on happy boy in the two and a half minutes. And, and he focused on Ian's originality. Ian was original. He would stay up off until one or two in the morning. I was long asleep writing jokes. He would write his own jokes. He loved to write jokes. And so in the, in the two and a half minutes that my son Campbell had to talk about his father, he said, so dad, in honor of you, I'm going to write. And he talked about happy boy. I'm going to write an original joke. And it was just, it was just so sweet that even he remembered that happy boy originated because Ian couldn't say goodbye to the boys in the morning. He was here in the studio and that was his way of saying goodbye, goodbye to his own sons and sending them off to school with a smile. So I love that that Beth's son uh, had the same had the same yeah. reaction. So that's wonderful. Thank you, Beth. That's very sweet. And I'm sure Jordan. Uh, I'm sure there's a whole. He's not alone. I'm sure there's a, a every kid that listened to you guys back then who's now an adult I'm, uh, was affected by in one way or the other. It was a great uh, bit. It was a great bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he said the best bit he's ever done was on April Fool's Day. Oh, he would get me. I mean, I'd like to think I have a bit of a brain. I don't think I'm the smartest person in the room, but I also don't think I'm, uh, you know. And But he would get me every April Fool's. And, really? Um, yes. I remember. And yeah. um, the best was, I think, probably around 2010, 2011, maybe. I can't remember the year exactly. Um, when Fifty Shades of Grey came out. Okay, oh, no, the, I just have to set up. Okay, we are a, <laughs> a, a talk station for women. Yeah. A lot of women work at this radio station. The women at this radio station went insane when that uh, book came out. It, it was a whole podcast about it. <laughs> podcast. We were all reading it, yep. Mm -hmm. The cafeteria conversations, people were talking about their <laughs> sex lives. I'm like, what is happening here? So E.L. James was the author of Fifty Shades of Grey, and Ian and I were a little bit competitive about booking, and we had produced Emma then, and so we're all like, Ian had some contacts at Random House. I think it was through Random House. I thought I had some contacts somewhere. So we, the race was on, like, who's going to book E.L. James? And so Ian, this started in January, like, I'm going to get E.L. James. I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to get E.L. James. So we're competing with one another to try and book her. Sometime, maybe February, maybe in March, he's like, I got her. She's booked. I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is awesome. This is going to be great. So April 1st comes around, and he's been promoting it for a week that we've got E.L. James on. And I'm kind of jealous because he booked it, but okay, it's going to be good for the show. So that morning... <laughs> Oh no! It's like 
eight. Oh, no. You know, it's top of the hour, eight o'clock. We've got E.L. James. Great. She comes on. We're talking about the book. If people don't remember, oh. Fifty Shades of Grey was... Oh, God. How would you guys describe the book? Um, Cinemax in book form. There you go. Thank yeah. you. Perfect Cinemax after fast. midnight. Yeah, yeah. Perfect yeah. description. So... Yeah. British, she was British, so she's on, and you know, Emma, our producer, put her through, and we're having this interview about the sensation of Fifty Shades of Grey. Interview's going on about six minutes. <laughs> then E.L. James says to me, So, do you like to be paddled? <laughs> <laughs> that did not no and, and no I'm like, and she starts asking me the most personal oh. questions about our sex life and what goes on in the bedroom <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, i can't even talk anymore <laughs> and then ian just says april fools <laughs> no <laughs> he had been planting the seed that he had eel james since january uh. He hired a British actress or an American actress with a decent British accent yep. to pretend she was E.L. James. Oh. Totally got me. And and our producer didn't know either. Our Emma producer, didn't know? Emma didn't know. So, oh. so mad. He kept it to himself. He was so good at that. He kept it to himself. It was a great bit and a great April oh. Fool's. Oh, 100%. Oh. A good, I think great is an understatement. That yeah. is perfect. That's radio good. perfection. It was good. It was so you good. were just speechless. Like you just didn't even I, know. I, like, I was, I, I, moving I, I, on. I, I, no, I don't like to be paddled. I don't like to be paddled. I don't like to be paddled. Like, I'm not doing yeah. this. I'm did not you, doing this. Did you, did, you, did you know when she said the paddling, the first question, oh, did you think she was serious? Like you yes. didn't catch on right away, right? Oh, no. No, because if you read the book, you would, oh, yeah, you would think she's a little crazy. wacky. She's going to go here. She's going to yeah. go here. It and she's crazy. a little, she's a little nutter butter. So yeah, yeah it what probably would be, cups? yeah. Well, I wouldn't know because I never talked to her. <laughs> yeah, uh, true. Very, yeah. Oh, oh Marjorie. It was good. He was so good at getting people. I will never forget when you guys were broadcasting from the Metrodome. Yep. It was when the movie Up came out. Oh, Alexis. And they did this whole promotion. Do you remember this, Jace? There was a- I have pictures of it. You, okay, we need to share those because there was oh. this. So it was really actually brilliant on the part of the uh, you know PR crew and, yeah. and Up. Because, it was a great promotion. Great, because there were balloons. You sat in this little armchair. It went up to the top of the Metrodome and then went back down. So you kind of got the feeling of what the house would feel like. And wow, this is great. And no one would go up and do it. Except this moron right here, yeah. this guy right Put here. Put me in the chair. Put me I in the chair. Like, I'll go Lex, there. look in the Lex, look in the camera. Oh, there it is. Okay. I have a picture of you in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're it's, yeah. it was high. We were going to the top of the Metrodome, so I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. And so you know, Ian's like, perfect. Here's a wireless mic. We're gonna talk as we go up. And at some point, I couldn't so hear you guys. So we're live on the air. Oh, we're, we're live. live on the air. Okay, live on the air. I'm floating up, and I'm just like, wow, look at this. And at the top of the Metrodome, I just remember these huge baseball cards, <laughs> like that were like on the wall. And I was like, look at there's Kirby Puckett, and you know, just kind of just. And then all of a sudden, I hit the top. And I'm there for a little bit, and I could barely hear what's going on because the wire, the, the, the headsets weren't wireless. And I'm, I'm looking down, and all of a sudden, all of the lights in the Metrotome go off. Oh my Everyone God. below me, including the woman that is holding the rope of the balloons, oh. Paul Black, too, get up. Me? Jace, you were Ever. there, too. Yep. No, you I mean, I did. I oh, was I'm in sorry. on it, too. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah Jace, yeah. too. You guys get up and start walking out the door. <laughs> and I'm at the top going, um, hello. <laughs> Do you forget somebody? And for like a good, I, it felt like 50 minutes, but it was like two minutes of being up there. That was, it, that is unbelievable. And I'm just, and so I'm just kind of like, just airing out all of my anxiety. <laughs> up there. Sitting in the dark. Yes. At the, at the um. Oh and my I'm, gosh. I just realized, like, okay, well, do I have to, like, go down this tiny little road? Is Ian still talking do to you at this to... point? Or are we just ignoring you up we're, in the dark? Oh, we're ignoring her. Completely ignoring me. We're laughing. I'm screaming. I'm, you're, Alexa's screaming, and Ian is laughing. So Ian's on the show, <laughs> and you could hear. If Ian, if Ian's talking, this is what you can hear in the background, which got us laughing anymore. You can hear the faint, you can hear Alexa going, like, Oh, my God. 
And where Ian is laughing so hard because she's up there and Ian, just like Alexis said, Ian had convinced everybody and even, and Marjorie, you know this, publicists and PR people are persnickety and they want everything to be perfect. They just want their message delivered. They don't want shenanigans from local morons. And Ian convinced the Disney folks (laughs) to go along with us and even like Lex said, the rope holder, who wasn't real sure that this was a good idea. And Ian's like, oh, she's fine. And I and and I remember oh, I remember oh, I Ian, the woman looked at Ian and looked at me because I was with Alexis. And the woman goes, is she afraid of heights? I go, oh, no, she loves heights. She's good. Oh, we oh, she loves heights. This is her favorite thing in the world. Her absolute favorite. Oh, thing she in the loves world. this. She loved being up there. And oh, Lex, I, I that's a good memory. Like, what if I just popped one balloon? at a time i would just descend <laughs> slowly and then when it's like 10 feet i can jump what is wrong with I, you I, I, pop one balloon at a time marjorie oh. i was getting desperate at that point okay because we left her there for a long time yes. and then yeah when i got done i was so happy to hit the ground i was like screw all of you oh, <laughs> oh my god but i mean that honestly but that's ian, ian loves that was that's life. ian he loved yes. live radio and he yeah. loved bits like that where he could catch everybody off guard. Yep. And that and oh. and a little oh. chaos. Yeah. A little he the little right. chaos of You're it. Exactly yeah. Exactly right. You're exactly right. More oh, uh fun. more clips, more memories and more. And don't forget programming note, our good friends uh, Paul Black and uh, Colleen Lindstrom will be joining us in the second hour of this tribute. So stay right there. Call in sick to work. Uh, just tell your boss you have things to do. <laughs> stay in your car. Uh we'll be right back. Here's another Ian and Marjorie flashback promo. Lucky Marjorie. She seems to learn something new every day. I was looking that up the other day because I happened to notice, I think I see a lot more people picking their nose these days, and I'm one of them. And I... (laughs) Oh, I am. So I looked it up online, and yes, this is the booger season. And since Ian and Marjorie live their life out loud, we get to learn something, too. Aren't you glad to know that this is the booger season and that it's not just you and that it's everybody? (laughs) Thank you for all that reassurance. Ian and Marjorie, living life out loud every weekday morning, 5 to 9 on FM 107.1. Here's another classic Ian Punnett highlight from Ian and Marjorie. 30% of the people listening said they can't believe Marjorie missed Hanson. People had a meeting. I'm sorry. But did you have a note last night you you uh, they, they were on dancing with the stars last night they rocked they were great uh, did you get hansen's permission did you to miss them to miss them last night no do you want it hansen's here good morning hansen how's it going morning. good morning i like your poll that's uh, that's quite interesting okay uh, i'm completely freaked out <laughs> see the marjorie did not know you guys okay. were coming up so okay hey, is, is this really hansen this is really handsome. It's really Taylor, Zach, and okay, I. I was not prepared for this. <laughs> I am not at my best for you. This really bugs me. Her hair is a mess. She's I didn't just brush not... my teeth this morning. You know what? Just it's the theater of the mind. You, you, yeah. you didn't have to. You know, just we're just gonna picture you as you would like for you to you to be pictured in our naked. mind. You just, naked uh, is fine. <laughs> naked Go is naked. Fine. Remembering Ian Punnett all day today on My Talk 107.1. Welcome back. Jason and Alexis in the morning, uh, a special a special edition of our show. As uh, as you know, we're paying tribute to our good friend, Ian Punnett, uh, not just on our show, but uh, um, all day long. You're going to be hearing those clips again. Can't say it enough. Thanks to Rocco. Um, everybody on the staff really wanted to do right by Ian. It was it meant a great deal to us. And Rocco um, took the ball and ran with it with a home run. And uh, pulling those clips and and going through archive after archive uh, to find just the right clips, and you're going to be hearing them all day. So again, thanks to Rocco um, for for do- doing this well, for not just doing it well, doing it perfect for Ian. Absolutely, yeah, because uh, Ian Ian deserves that. I have another email, and then I I, I want to share a story here. This is uh, you've got mail because it was you know we also want to include all of you listening. Uh, you know, you were a part of Ian and Marjorie's family by extension. Shauna writes to us, hi, Jason, Alexis. Uh, I remember listening to Ina Marjorie uh, in my 20s and my son was little and loved listening to them on the way to school. Then when you Alexis came in, he continued to listen. He's now 19 and listens uh, to this day. Oh. Um, and we consider it uh, a w- wonderful vehicle for mother and son bonding on the way to school. Oh, I love that. 
So thanks to Ian and Marjorie and to the morning show in general. So Shauna, thank you. Again, wow. that's why we do it. Right, Lex? Right, Marjorie? Right? I mean, that's why we do it. That's yep. why we get up at the butt crack of dawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, um, I know Lex feels, and I, I, Ian passed away. I was gone. And I, I realized, Colin reminded me, I, I haven't been able, uh, I didn't, I, I haven't had the opportunity to say anything about Ian because I was gone for my holiday break. Uh, when Ian passed, and um, and Lex, I don't know if you shared this uh, this story, but Lex and I feel very much the same way in different in different versions about Ian and what he personally did for us. And I shared this uh, in my Facebook post, but um, yeah, I can get through this. Um, it's all love here, buddy. Yep. Um, the morning show. Lex and I moving to the morning show. Um, it's not an overstatement to say it wouldn't have happened without Ian. And I'm not talking Ian and Marjorie leaving the show. Um, I'm not talking about Ian, uh, unfortunately, having to leave the show because of health, you know, um, because of his ear. But I'm talking about a level of generosity that you don't often find in just normal life. And you certainly don't find in, in the competitive world of our business. Mm -hmm. And I, I haven't said this, uh, I, I maybe said it once or twice, um, but Lex and I were brought in way before the public. Um, we knew, I think, I think even before B. Arthur, I think, <laughs> I think before official conversations were had, Ian at the state fair pulled Alexis and I separately, or I think together to tell us that um, there was a strong likelihood that we, that Marjorie, that the Ian and Marjorie show was going to be wrapping up. And he had known that I was at the end of a contract with uh, TV, with Fox. And he had gotten wind of that. And he pulled me into our nasty little Kmart tent at the fair. That's <laughs> our nasty. That's what, was, yeah. that's what it really, what it was. It was the best, nothing but the best, but he pulled us into our unair conditioned mosquito infested tent at the fair <laughs> And he said, uh, hey, come here. And I thought I had done something. You know, I thought, oh, God, did I uh -oh. say something? He's going to give me some advice or, you know, what, what did I say? And, you know, what did I do? Is he going to warn me about Lori and Julia? What is, what is going to happen? So, yeah, is he going to tell me? So I walk in there and he said, I'm just going to let you in on something. Um, we are leaving. And I think you and Alexis should take this job. I think you and Alexis should take the morning show. And he campaigned for us. Uh, and he let me know at the perfect time because I needed to make a, de a decision. And he knew that. He knew the business. Yeah, he did. And, and without that advanced knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, the dominoes would not have lined up. It's a tricky business. It's a very tricky business. And I'm leaving out, you know, the inside baseball crap that you don't care about. But my point being is, and I wrote this in the Facebook post the trajectory of my professional life and Alexis's professional life would have been very different without Ian. And, and mine too. It, it, I, I never thought I, um, I had been a producer before this. Yeah. Um, and Ian was very good at pulling people in and he loved radio so much that for you and and for Alexis he knew that you did too yeah and so you respected it you respected the profession that it is it's a profession and he took it very seriously and so I think part of him pulling you aside was an acknowledgement that hey I want I want you always to be in this club with me because you get it. You get what a privilege this is. You don't take it for granted. And so, you know, that in the sadness, he, he left the show because of tinnitus. He's, he just had terrible buzzing in his ears. And amongst, um, he also had, um, and we didn't talk a lot about it at the time, but he had, um, I can't even pronounce it, but he, ha he was just had this chronic headache. And so the combination of those two things was very hard mm. to spend four oh. hours a day with headphones oh, on. Oh, God, yeah. And um, 
But what, what brought him such great joy was mentoring. He loved that. He loved seeing people who appreciated the gifts that they were given and how to make those gifts blossom and get bigger. And, and so I think that brought him great joy that the show that we had worked so hard to build could be passed on to somebody who equally appreciated the opportunity, which both you and Alexis did. I mean, that was clear how much you guys loved media, loved being in the media and saw the joy of it. I mean, that's always the hardest thing in this business is you peop- you see so many people in the business who sort of take it for granted or they think that they deserve it as opposed to the other way around, which it's a privilege to be employed in it. And I think Ian sensed that in, in the both of you. And obviously, you're both very talented, too. So that brought him great joy to be able to I say, wouldn't go that far, Marjorie, but go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> right, Lex? I mean, I wouldn't. I was like, uh, no, no, I just, I mean, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, and he did the same for me. I mean, he brought me into yeah. radio. I never thought I would be on the air. That was never. And when that happened, imagine it's your show. It was it was Ian's show. Yeah. And then I came on as sort of a background voice and then I kept getting pushed forward and then they renamed the show and put my name in it as well. That's, I mean, I was his wife, but that's huge generosity as well to say, okay, I'll share the space with you. Mm-hmm. I'll share my space with you. And um, he was incredibly generous that way. And he was that way with the students. I mean, I loved, yeah. I loved watching him mentor the students. I mean, extraordinary things. He did extraordinary things at K-State with those students. Well, and he so, had just such a way of honing in. You felt like you, you're in a crowded room, but you felt like the most important because he just had a way of just yep. like listening in a way that <laughs> um, many people don't have, you know, and to, to be able just to hone in and go, okay, well, here's how I see this. And why don't let's... Uh, just a whole different way of thinking about it where you're like heated and just like, Oh, I want to burn something down. And then, <laughs> Oh, 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 wow. Oh, wow. You know, what, what, this, 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 wow. I, I, I don't know. Go saying. with it, Marjorie. We just go with it. Just go with it. Yeah. We just go from zero to arson. Really Thank you. Right. Yeah. Show. Marjorie. It's just, it's a, it's one of her aspects now. She just, yeah. Uh, Holly <laughs> has the yeah, dart gun. We just, really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I matrix. Whoa, I can backbend like crazy Uh now, Marjorie. You should see. But to just hone in on that and just kind of say, well, how about we see it from this angle instead? That is such a gift. Right. And he was very giving and genuous with (laughs) with that. Absolutely. Uh, we Lex, I swear, God. it went. I just never thought the Ian Pete uh, Punnett tribute would include arson, but here we I are. There either. we go. Yeah, Colleen and Paul Black joins the conversation okay, with <laughs> next live from the My Talk 1071 studios. Uh, hold it. Hold, uh, where'd the little kid with the cute voice go? Hey, things change. Teenagers' voices, radio station names, but one thing's still the same. My mom and dad's awesome radio show. So let's try this again. Live from the My Talk 1071 studios in St. Paul. In my mom's room down the hall. It's Ian and Marjorie on My Talk 1071. 